I recently got sent one of these Wii U terminals from Seed Studio. It's a nice little device. It's got a 2.4 inch LCD screen along with a 5 way button on the top. Along the base we've got two Grove connectors and there's an SD card slot along with three more buttons on the top. On the bottom there's a 40 pin GPIO connector that is compatible with the Raspberry Pi. Looking under the hood we've got a CPU that is different from the boards we normally play with. The Wii U terminal uses an AT SAMD 51 p 19 with an ARM Cortex M4F core. This runs at 120MHz but you can boost this clock speed up to 200MHz if you need to. Connectivity is provided by a Realtek RTL 8720DN which gives this dual band 2.4 and 5GHz Wi-Fi along with Bluetooth. There's an inertial measurement unit so you've got a gyroscope and an accelerometer and it has a light sensor and infrared emitter. More interesting for our projects it's got a built in microphone and a buzzer. Now the buzzer is not that useful at the moment and is only suitable for playing tones but the built in microphone seems to be usable. We've got a screen and a microphone so I thought it would be fun to port over my audio monitor code to it. There's a couple of things that need to be modified. The first thing is there's no I2S peripheral for getting samples from the microphone. The microphone is connected to an analog pin and we need to use analog read to get the current value. I did find some examples of using DMA to read this value but to keep the code simple I'm using a timer to read the samples. I'm only going to sample the audio at 8kHz which is good enough for a nice audio display and won't tax the CPU too much. So my first attempt at getting it working was a bit lacklustre and after instrumenting the code with some timings I found this was due to the Seed Studio fork of the TFT library. It's taking around 150 milliseconds to render the frequency bar chart. Weirdly, when showing the spectrogram, which is rendered at full screen, it's pretty good, taking just 30 milliseconds to render the whole screen. So this leads me to suspect it's a fairly simple fix on their side, so I imagine there will be an update at some point to fix this performance problem. Fortunately, in the meantime, there's an alternative library that supports the display and can render all the screens in around 30 milliseconds, which is more than fast enough for us. The two display libraries are pretty much compatible in terms of method calls, so it's a pretty straightforward swap out. What I've done is make a very simple base class for the display that defines the methods I need to call. I've made all my code depend on this class. And then to swap out the two different displays, I've got a wrapper class that derives from this base class and delegates on to the real library. To reduce writing lots of boilerplate code, I've used a template class. This takes advantage of the fact that both libraries implement pretty much the same methods, so I just need to write the code once and the C++ compiler works out what I'm trying to do. If you like this kind of coding, then you'd probably enjoy the previous video on improving your Arduino code using C++. It works pretty nicely. I really like these devices with displays and microphones. There's lots of potential. It's a shame the speaker is not a bit more useful, but there is a bolt-on module that will give you a proper speaker. I've put the code up on GitHub so you can give it a go if you want and if you've got a Wii U terminal let me know how it works. I think we'll be exploring this device in the future.